Are you too gullible? Are you too quick to believe shit men be telling you? Are you stuck in the bias that whatever men tells you, <laughs> you just want to believe it? Because it supports the idea that you are in fact lovable and pickable and choosable. So if men tell you that you're pretty and that, you know, they want to make you their wife one day, you're going to rush to believe that? Is that you? Because if it is, then this episode is specifically for you because the girls are tired. The girls is me. I'm tired. I'm so over this. Like, I, <laughs> I'm getting to a stage yet where I'm not going to say anything anymore when I see it happening in real time. I'm just going to be like, mm. see no evil, hear no evil. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just think that a lot of women are too gullible like by gullible if you don't know what that word means gullible is when you easily believe what you are told so you're easily impressionable by information that you're just given and usually people who are gullible are children um because they are not old enough and don't have the brain development to be able to discern between truth and a lie when it comes to certain things but if you're an adult woman who is past the age of 25 you need to fucking pack it in because this is gonna this is this could cost you your life i know i started off like joking yeah but like this is a life or death situation there are women who are so gullible that they're willing to just follow men anywhere and that leads to their death whether that man gives you a date rape drug, whether that man leads you to a place where you think you're safe and then physically invades your body, whether that man steals money from you, hmm. Whether that man has secretly got a family, but you're so gullible that you genuinely believe that you're the only one he's talking to. Mm? <laughs> I used to be gullible, but I think I was gullible at an age where I am allocated a gullible quota. Like I said, if you are below 25 i'm gonna allow you in it like i'll let i'll let it slide because they do say that the brain doesn't completely develop until the age of 25 but aside from that scientific information i also think that there's something that happens once you cross the other side of 25 if you're paying attention and if you are applying what you've learned in your former years of your 20s like there is something that happens where like you just become less swindled or less swindleable but what's dangerous is I think a lot of women become too gullible in the presence of men who they perceive as powerful or a lot of women become too gullible in the presence of men who are giving them the validation that they have been dying for, thirsty for. And usually I think you are most vulnerable to this level of thirst for validation when you've just come out of a relationship with a guy and things haven't worked out, you know, he made you feel used, you gave too much of yourself you regret a lot of what you did with him and as a result you kind of want to use the next relationship with a guy to repair what you ruined with the previous guy or other times you just want to use the next guy as a way to get the attention that you were so desperate for with the previous guy. Because you know how they say, like, if you want to get over a guy, you get under another one. I agree with that. And I also don't agree with it. Because 
it really does depend on the headspace you're in when you're getting under the new guy. And I do believe that the huge bulk of getting over a guy is being able to get past being alone for a while because that's where your power grows back. You're not going to find your power by constantly being around men. <sighs> Especially if it's men who have just come to circle back. Because I believe there's such a thing as going backwards. And in my eyes, and my opinion, going backwards is letting men from the past have a second chance if they've not paid for it. They must pay dearly. And this depends on the kind of men you're meddling with. Like, if you're dealing with men who have money, then you better make sure that the forgiveness is in the five figures that he's paying. You know, a little 10K here, a little 12K there ain't hurt nobody. You would be surprised. I know that number sounds ridiculous and it sounds like, oh my God, who's going to pay that? Girl, this is why I believe in developing enough self-worth to not think anything is, is too expensive for you to demand. Granted, you are demanding it from the relevant person. So it all comes down to the men that you pick. That's why you got to start from square one and really nail square one. Because everything from square one becomes uh, symmetrical, harmonious, easy to execute. But if you're too gullible, you're going to let a man come spin the block on you and just tell you words. And usually women who are too gullible are the ones who, they're insecure. And I'm telling you, it'd be the prettiest women that be doing this nonsense. That's why I'm like, don't look at these girls on... Instagram who like they're light skinned with the baby hairs and they're super pretty and they got all the trendy outfits and they get load they get like 36k likes each time they upload a picture don't don't worry about what they're doing because a lot of them are gullible and they're getting got by men you can't you can't see what decisions a person makes by their Instagram necessarily but you don't know if those women are getting talked to out the side of their neck by men. <laughs> like, you don't know what those women are tolerating to be with those men. All you see is what they want you to see on Instagram. But there, I know a lot of women who, I say I know, I've like met a lot of women who fit this stereotype where they are st undeniably stunning. I'm talking like they're the beauty standard but they don't know how to carry themselves. So they get men who, even men who have money will come and like spin the block on them. And by spin the block, I mean, when a man does the reappearing act after he's hurt you and disappeared without even tidying up the mess he made. And then out of nowhere, he comes back acting like nothing's happened. And then these girls just like allow it to happen. They don't even think with strategy and foresight. They don't think, okay, this man has really hurt my feelings and he's pissed me off greatly, massively. So what I'm going to do is, even though when we briefly dated, he took me shopping and I had a good time and he was charming and I still have those good memories, but I'm hurt by how he handled me. When he inevitably returns, this is how much I'm going to charge him for re-entry into the club. Because it's one in, one out. And if you want to come in here, it's going to cost you because you're an offender. You're on the offenders list of this club. So, I would be very strong in his groveling. Because he should be groveling. Groveling is when a man is profusely apologising and begging. I'll be very strong during that process and I will say to him, well, for me to consider forgiving you, I expect 10K in my bank account. Until you have put that 10K in my bank account, I do not expect to hear from you again.
I believe he would already have had your account details but by, by this point because he sent you money in the past. He better have if you're dating a man of money. So he's already got your account details. Um, but you've made it clear that like, look, no funny business. 10K. He's either going to find the money and give you or he's not going to give you 10K and then you don't have to worry about hearing from him again because he's a time waster. You need insurance to know that your time isn't going to just go to waste into the ether. Into the ether. You, need, you need the insurance and assurance and that is cash. I don't actually care what anyone says about this. I know a lot of people are like, but cash is just such a capitalist fake component of power and that does not belong anywhere in a loving relationship okay you can say what you want to say if that makes you feel better about accepting crumbs from men I ain't gonna hold you but what I am saying is men are gonna spend their money on whatever they feel is valuable to them and if they ain't spending it on you, they're spending it elsewhere. She who is brave enough to ask gets what she asks for. If you're scared of money, then just say you're scared of money. If you feel like you are not worthy of receiving, then just say that and go and work on it if it matters enough to you. But what you're not going to do is like demonize women who know how to get what they want. Like Some women like money because some women like having an easy life. Some women like having their bills paid. I love the feeling of when my bills are paid. I've never met somebody who's like, I really hate the feeling of security that comes with having my bills paid. Ugh. I hate it when someone comes out of nowhere and sets up a direct deposit for my bills. I hate when I can't pay my own bills. I want to, I want to struggle and pay my own bills. I want to pay for overpriced energy. I don't want anyone to help me. I want to do it myself. <laughs> I love being taxed heavily for my hard-earned income. <laughs> Said nobody ever, except the women who be pretending to be so morally superior and righteous when women who date men who have money are talking. Because I think a lot of people do that to make themselves feel better about what they're tolerating, like I said earlier. So when it comes to being too gullible, I just think women are just, oh, there's a lot of work to be done because you lot be getting got. Got! You be making it too easy. How are you going to be letting men just slam dunk you like, like that? These are people who get boners when you remove your bra. Like, you have power. You have literally got power. <laughs> how are you going how are you going to be letting men like slide tackle you like that personally i wouldn't have that like i can hand on heart hand on pussy say that there is no man who is making me question my worth right now i genuinely do sleep well at night there is no because i've experienced that before where you know you're tossing and turning on eh, what should i have said to him eh he thinks I'm an idiot. Ah, chai. When I catch him. You be having them thoughts at 3 a.m. when you should be sleeping, when you know you got to be up at 8 a.m. Are you all right? <laughs> That's how men can interfere with your equilibrium. Is that what you want for yourself? Not me. I am amused by the amount of stuff women tolerate because they're so keen and desperate to believe that that man sees them as an exception. He's going to tell you whatever he knows you want to hear in order to fast track his opportunity to sleep with you. If you are too easily swayed by a man being nice to you, you in danger, girl. Danger mouse. Danger mouse. <laughs> like, I think people are just not deep in the reality of what's going on here. 
And I think there is power in being a woman who's not easy to impress. That's why I think the opposite of being gullible is being not easily impressed. I consider myself someone who is not easily impressed by men. And I don't think it's because I'm asexual. I just think men are not that interesting if you really put your glasses on and clean them. And I'm not talking the rose tinted ones, put those away. I'm talking about the clear, the clear lenses, the varifocals, baby, the adaptable lenses, put them on and clean them. Men are not that like magnificent. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get by on not being easily impressed by men. I, I sometimes for the fun of it, pretend to be super impressed, <laughs> but they know that I'm lying because I'll be disappearing very quickly. The only men who actually receive a version of me that is genuinely impressed is my friends, like my guy friends. I've, I've probably said this before and I'll say it again. The men who get more out of me, ironically, are friends. Like, if you want to get more out of me, just be my friend, honestly. Like, I don't even give that much to men who I'm dating. Unless they really, really work for it. But if I'm friends with you, you're going to see sides of me that you wouldn't see if I was dating you. Because dating is, I have to concentrate. Okay. I have to see what kind of blood clot behavior is about to come around the corner. Because that's what men do. If you're like, oh no, dating should be about relaxing into the feeling. Okay, girl, well, let me know how that works out for you in five years time. Because you don't have the time you think you have. <laughs> Especially when you're canoodling and frolicking with men who have no future, no prospects, no agenda for their well-being. They're just using you to coast along. Let me know how that works out for you in five years time. But um, men who I'm friends with, I get to experience more of a fun and innocent freedom with them because there's no expectation I'm not dating them I'm not being courted by my male friends so there's no reason for me to feel like hmm he's dropping the ball so I'm gonna have to drop the ball too because what is his behavior Pooja do you know what I mean with my guy friends, life happens. Sometimes they disappear. Sometimes I'll be the one who checks in and I'll be like, where are you, friend? Are you okay? Are you alive? Let's hang out. I miss you. Like, I am I do that because my relationships with my guy friends are innocent. And if I do have guy friends, I have a few guy friends who is not that innocent. <laughs> They're the ones who I kind of like... Blah, but very lightly <laughs> because those are the guy friends who they be doing stuff for me because they want to and because they just like me so sometimes like like I have this guy friend who <laughs> me and him would sometimes go to the gym together um and he's very <laughs> He's built like, he's built like Jason Momoa, but like he's not as, his muscles are not as defined as Jason Momoa's. He's just bulky. Like he looks like, you see people who are indigenous to New Zealand, yeah? You see how those people are very like, there's a bulk that their build has that isn't necessarily like the muscular bulk. They're just like girthy humans. Like I'm not even talking about like sexual organ girth. I'm just talking like as human beings, they're just... They're just widely built. This guy, even though he's not from New Zealand, he's built like that. And he's very tall. <laughs> and he's, I think he, either he used to be a personal trainer or he studied, what's that course? To stu I think it's sports science. One of them courses that people who personal train would have studied. Either he was a personal trainer or he studied sports science. One of the two. All I know is that he knows a lot about the machines and he knows a lot about how to utilize 
the time you're spending on the machine so that you're actually getting the most you can out of that workout. Like, he's just very smart. And he's quite shy. And he reminds me of, like, he reminds me of one of those tech dude bros. He, I think he actually is a tech dude bro. He has some sort of career in tech. I never be remembering. When men tell me what they do, I'd be forgetting. Unless it's something obvious, like, I am an astronaut. I am a doctor. I am a comedian. Please don't be a fucking comedian. But anyway, any of those things, <laughs> then, you know, I'll probably remember. But he does something in tech. Something that's enough for him to be making money. Because he can afford the membership at that gym that I've got into. And my membership is complimentary. <laughs> but his one isn't. And it's like a, what, 100 and something pound a month membership? or Yeah, I think it's gone up to 100 and something pound a month. Um, but me and him have been friends for a little while. Like, we knew each other since I was a teenager. But we weren't, like, in each other's lives constantly. We just, we just knew each other. So I already felt comfortable with him throughout getting to know him as a now more grown adult. But um, where I'm going with this is that Anytime I'd be in the gym with him, it's not like I was being like, oh, it's not like I was being like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but I felt comfortable to genuinely asking questions like those machines that I didn't really know how to like um, adjust the positioning or I just had questions about it and I could just ask him. And, you know, guys love, guys love being able to help you with things like they love explaining stuff especially when it's their their forte hmm they want to explain it to you so <laughs> so even though we both went to the gym to do our own individual work like we had our own individual session planned for our individual selves he was spending so much time just kind of like not hovering around me but he was just helping me a lot <laughs> Like, he was counting my reps for me. <laughs> and at no point was I going to be like, oh, it's okay, I got it now. You can go and you can go and um, do what you was doing. Nah, I was enjoying the attention. <laughs> and it was nice because I could still have banter with him. Um, but he's never been disrespectful towards me. I think he does fancy me, but the reason why I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily date him is because he um what's the word? He just knows too much about me. <laughs> As in he follows he follows my Instagram. So I just feel like yeah, nah, you know too much. There's no I, my mystery can't work here, you know? I like to go for the men who they know nothing about me. <laughs> <laughs> until they know enough about me and then we'll take it from there. But yeah, the mystery don't work over there. So I enjoy having him as a guy friend. You know, we can go gym together. I can feel like a cute bunny around him. Um, and that's that. But I can't get got. Yeah, I might like slip up once or twice, but the slip up isn't like I slip and land on someone's dick. It's more like I... Um, I can slip up in terms of maybe being too lenient with someone, giving too much benefit of doubt, which I just don't think men deserve. Like, it's a benefit for a reason. Benefits should be earned, not just given. I think as well, when it comes to being gullible, what I was saying earlier about just you just so badly want to believe that what this man is saying is true. So you embolden your bias by letting him treat you a type of way because, oh, but he told me that I'm amazing. He told me he's not seeing anyone else. This is the one that gets me. He told me he's not talking to anyone else. He told me I'm the only one he's talking to. And you believe that. You believe that you're the only one he's talking to, even though you both met on a dating app.
Are you alright? <laughs> Is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just... This is what I'm saying, like, I don't know what to do anymore. I don't think I have to do anything, to be honest. Like, I enjoy being able to use my platform to raise the alarm and encourage women to listen to themselves more. But what I'm not about to do is try and save the women who are committed to their own suffering. I just think a lot of women are incredibly insufferable and cannot be saved and my work is not for them. Like, some people are just going to have to take the L. <laughs> because what do you mean? He told you you are the only person that he's speaking to and you just believe that. Of course he's not going to say to you, I'm actually talking to, like, six women at the moment. Three haven't replied to me. One I went on a date with yesterday and I slept with her and I'm kind of bored of her. The other one I'm going to be going on a date with in two days time. And I kind of like her tits more than I like yours. And she seems interesting, but I'm not sure. And with you, I like talking to you because you give me attention when the other four haven't responded. But also I do want to sleep with you. Because I'm not over my ex and you remind me of her. They'll have all that in their mind, but they'll say to you, I'm not talking to anyone else. Because they know that you want to hear that. They know that if they said to you that they're talking to five other women and you're amongst the carousel of disaster, you're not going to like that and you're not going to want to sleep with them. So... The desire and hurry and impatience is costing you. I think a lot of women lack patience and lack self-control. And that is why I think being gullible is costing you. Because being gullible does fall under the umbrella of self-control. Because it's about controlling what you choose to consume controlling what you choose to believe whether it's what you believe about yourself or what you believe about that man and if you're too gullible that man can infiltrate your mental ecosystem and in effect he can have influence over what you believe about yourself and sometimes he doesn't need to even directly call you names for him to change the way you feel about yourself it can come from how he treats you whether he treats you as a second option, whether he blows hot and cold with you, whether he speaks horribly to you in arguments. First of all, as a man, why are you not letting me win the argument? As a man. Why are you not accepting responsibility for my wrongdoings as a man? <laughs> no, jokes aside though, like, if that man is shady towards you in argument, you know that it's hard to put a finger on it, but you know those men who like, they just want to argue with you and they actually enjoy the feeling of winning an argument with you. Those are the men you should stay away from. Because they know how to get into your mind. They want to have you pressed, hot and bothered to enough of an extent where you're defending yourself in their presence when you could just ignore him and let him be talking to the WhatsApp server. That's what you should be doing. I am constantly updating <laughs> my mental firewall. Okay. <laughs> I just think that a lot of women are not aware of the psychological warfare that is at hand here. Men have to get into your mind to be able to get into your pussy because if they can't convince you to think lower of yourself in order to reduce yourself to their level, how are they going to sleep with you? I wish more women knew what power that they had because I do think that 
women are more gullible than men. Because women seem to act on validation more than men do. And you see it in the ways that women are just like letting these stupid men have sex with them. I know that a lot of people have varying outlooks and opinions on what having sex with someone means. But in my opinion, having sex with a man gives that man the impression that what he's doing is fine. So if you're in a good place with him, then having sex with him is a reminder that you are in you are in the green. Woo! You're doing well. Woo! Now, if that man is blowing hot and cold of you or being mean to you or making you doubt the feelings that he has for you and you're having sex with him, you're rewarding bad behavior. You are supporting what he's doing by giving him the one thing that he so dearly wants from you. Why are you doing that? And I'm being really careful with my language because <clears throat> different women have sex for different reasons. You know, there are some women who are able to completely disconnect from the implications surrounding what it means to have sex with a man and they are able to have sex just for money if you're one of those women i'm not talking about that because that's work that's sex work i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the women who are not even being paid anything they just want shillings of validation they just want the ability to feel picked and chosen by a man so they use sex as some sort of like bartering tool, but they're not using it to its full potential and power. <clears throat> I'm worried, concerned, alarmed at <clears throat> what women choose to tolerate and justify to themselves and I see it often in the dms that I receive from women who are like hey girl so basically I was on and off with this man for 12 years first of all on and off for 12 years where did you guys find 12 years to do that how do you just give away 12 years of your life to dysfunction with a guy who you weren't even married to this is one of them situation, situationships. You was in a 12-year situationship. 12 years. Do you know what happens in 12 years? You go from nursery through to sixth form slash college. Like, that's your full mandatory education as a young person. That's 12 years. That's age. <laughs> I'm scared. 12 years of hot and cold and situationship. And your question is, yeah, so I'm not really sure what to do because it's been 12 years and, you know, we've been in a situationship for 12 years. And so, um, yeah, he's been kind of blown hot and cold with me. And he said that he really wants to be with me. But then... He said that he's having mental health issues and he's not sure if he wants to be with me or not. And I know that he's having mental health issues because he's depressed and I've been there a lot for him in the 12 years. But yeah, he's not sure if he wants to be with me. I think he's very sure that he doesn't want to be with you. A man either wants to be with you or he doesn't want to be with you. A man is either turned on or he's not turned on. There is no, oh, like I kind, I kind of like, I kind of want to be. 
12 years. And he's telling you he's not sure. But he's very sure of sleeping with you when it's convenient. And he's very sure of spending your money when it's convenient for him. And he's very sure of dragging his feet in your life. But you're not sure what to do. Because it's been 12 years. And you feel bad. He's your best friend and you can't imagine ever not having him in your life. Oh, well, girl, I'm sure he can imagine not having you in his life because he's been coasting you along, dragging his feet and blowing hot and cold, giving you modelled mixed signals. I don't think he fears the idea of you disappearing because he knows you're going to stay. Because you're gullible. Because you believe him when he tells you that the reason why he's not taking you seriously is because of his mental health. But when it's time for him to have sex with you, his mental health is suddenly not in question anymore. Because I think two things can be true at once. I think a man can genuinely be having mental health issues. And that can affect the way that he forms relationships with women. And I think that deserves to be acknowledged. And I think space deserves to be held for him. But as a friend, not as somebody who you're fucking. Because in you doing that, you are also giving the impression that it's okay to unravel your mess into my life. It's okay to not have your shit together over here with me. It's okay to dump your problems on me. It's okay to not be the type of man that I need at this stage in my life. It's okay, just drag me along for another 12 years. Let's fucking, let's fucking go. Is that what you want for your life? Because the sympathy and the willingness you have to believe men, is that mirrored? Do men have that same sympathy for you? Do you see men talking about women that they don't desire in a way where it's like, oh, you know, she's, she's not my type at all. She's, because you know how men be like, I don't like fat women. So let's use that as an example, even though it's not fair on fat women. I think fat women are fucking stunning. And the word fat is not negative. However, let's follow this example, because that's the, that's the main thing that men like to use, right? To put women down. Oh, I don't like fat women. And if she would just lose weight, then maybe I'll like her. And when they're like, oh, um, also, she, and also she's depressed all the time. And I'm just turned off by that. And she doesn't wear nice makeup and clothes. So I'm not, I don't like her. I don't want to sleep with her. That's what you see a lot of men be doing, especially when a woman has had a child. I've seen, oh my goodness, I have seen countless times where a woman is actually quite literally pregnant with the child that same man impregnated her with and that man is I don't want to I don't want to have sex with you because you're fat and you're pregnant and you stink and you've got spots and you've got cellulite and then be saying that shit out loud to women but the moment a woman is like I don't want to be with a man who is struggling so much that his struggle affects me. If a man is struggling mentally, I believe that he should be using that time to heal and nurture himself. He cannot be functional in a relationship with a woman. Not a woman like me anyway. I cannot be with a man who's financially struggling because he needs to use that money to prioritize his own well-being. He cannot afford a woman like me. And I, that's not me objectifying myself by saying a man cannot afford me. 
I am not an object. I am an experience, an experience that you cannot afford. So when men are being horrible towards women and making it very obvious why they don't want to be with those women, we allow it and we justify it. And we say, well, you know, to be fair, like, you know, he has to be turned on and, you know, yeah, like, I guess as a man, he gets to decide what he wants to be with. But then once a woman says, I'm not being with a broke man, everyone's, oh my goodness, what did you, what about men's mental health? <laughs> what about it? They'll be fine. They're going to have to thug it out, just like how we have to thug it out through the patriarchy that they reinforce every day, B. Welcome to the world. Good luck, because you're going to need it. So part of not being gullible is reducing the amount of excuses you make for men. If a man is having a hard time, that doesn't make him a bad person. It makes him someone who you can't date right now. Because most men exert their awful energy onto women. Most men enjoy bringing bad vibes to women's lives. Especially if th those men are dating women who are more successful than those men. Oh, God. That's why as a, as a woman who, if you have a career going for yourself, or if you are the definition of what most people would call independent i.e like you pay your own bills you make your own money you have a job slash career that sustains you enough for you to not need a man or to feel like you can pay a man's bills if you wanted to you in danger girl men will target you Especially if they know that you're one of them like feminist women. And when I say one of them feminist women, I'm not removing myself from that group. What I mean by one of them feminist women is the feminist women who like they center men's well-being in their feminism. I'm not saying it's bad to care about men's well-being. I'm saying that in a liberation movement that has been created to give women the power that they've had taken away from them and generate equity from for women it doesn't personally make sense to me for men's convenience to be prioritized in that process men are supposed to be inconvenienced by feminism if we're feminisming correctly meaning i don't personally resonate with the definition of feminism that implies that we want equality with men men can never be equal to me i'm superior to men i am here for equity and reparations as a black woman my feminism centers around reparations i don't do the white woman feminism where it's about trying to generate equality to men i strive and dream beyond that i want my things back not things, things. I want my things back. And I think when you're a feminist, especially like the white feminism, textbook academic type of feminism, where it's all about appeasing men and trying to get men on board. Try, try, trying to get men to believe in feminism. You find yourself shoehorning men into your own resistance to the same oppression that those men reinforce daily so you become one of those gullible women who because you're a feminist once you come across a man who's struggling what you see is a broken bird and you just want to help sew his wing back on and you just want to act out the feminism of making sure that because men are having a hard time too so I need to make sure that he has pussy because men de men deserve, all men deserve pussy because men deserve to be loved. Well, you know what? The good thing about love is that you don't have to have sex with someone to love them. If you want to show someone some love and support and community and care and kindness, you don't have to fuck them. I think you can be feminist and still leave men to clean up their own vomit. I think you can be feminist and still expect men to pay that equity your way, i.e. pay these bills or I will pay you no mind. I think you can be feminist 
and still believe that you deserve an easy, well-rested life if you're going to be laying with a man. A lot of women, especially the gullible ones, believe that it's infantilizing to expect that a man who is pressing your breast and fondling your nyash to take care of you. A lot of women think that it is, oh, if that man takes care of me, then I am disempowered. But babe, like you're still further economically disempowered when you're paying your own bills while that man is still there. You're further dis economically disempowered when you're splitting rent with a man. When you could just be with another man who you can keep your money and spend his on the utilities. Because you can love broke men and rich men all the same. Because when you when you negate that layer of money, they're they're still men. They're all aroused by the same thing. Okay, so if you're gullible enough to be easily swayed by the excuses that men make, that's why you keep ending up in repetitive, cyclical situations with men where you find yourself being the caretaker. Whether it's you being the financial caretaker of men whether it's you being the emotional caretaker of men, whether it's you being the physical picking up socks caretaker of men, whether it's you doing all three. You chose that life because you're so agreeable to men that you'll just take whatever. Or you take being gullible to a new height where you find yourself trying so hard to prove that you are useful to him because you've bought into his hype. You were gullible enough to buy into the hype that he is this superstar of a guy, even though he literally cannot pay his bills. And so because you're an independent working woman who has her own money and is successful in her own right, you want to prove to him that you are irreplaceable and you are useful to him. So you start paying his bills. You start making life easier for him. Because you hope that he will reciprocate that and he will show you gratitude in the form of loving you back. Because your self-esteem is so low that you view a man loving you back as a thank you for you overextending yourself in his life when you could have received that same love from him by not lifting a single finger because you shouldn't have to lift a finger. You shouldn't have to prove your use to a man. It should be the other way around. He's the one who should be auditioning for a spot in your life because you're the star always have been, always will be, but we've got it backwards. And I do think modern feminism has played a role in how gullible we have become. And I also believe that modern feminism is responsible for the excuses that we make for men because we don't want to make men feel hurt or disempowered by us empowering ourselves even though you're never going to see men sitting around being like I don't want a woman to feel disempowered by me exerting misogyny on her today I don't want a woman to feel disempowered by me changing the topic to asking her what her bra size is I don't want a woman to feel taken advantage of so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay her bills and leave her alone to do whatever she wants because as a man, I owe women reparations and where possible, I should always endeavour to pay those reparations forward in a woman's life, especially a woman who I am lucky enough to be fucking. And I acknowledge as a man that if I am fucking a woman, it does not mean she owes me anything. She could at any point decide to revoke access to this pussy and I am at her mercy. I have no say over what she does over her body. 
I can spend day in, day out pitching and marketing myself as a genius and a cool dude. But I, unless I am making myself absolutely useful to her financially, emotionally, comically, because we've got to laugh. Unless I'm making myself financially, emotionally, comically, physically, spiritually useful to her. I deserve nothing from that woman because I'm a mere man, a fallible man. I'm ruled by my dick. I have no standards. I will fuck a cheeseburger as long as it's got that grip grip. Because I'm a man, a mere man. And I do not deserve a queen, but I will do whatever I can to bend her psyche into thinking that I am the king just so I can feel a smidgen, a stroke of that tight grippy, wet, gushy pussy. <laughs> and these are the people you're telling me I should feel sorry for. Hell no. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. And that's what I aim to do with my work. I'm just showing you what's happening. It's up to you what you choose to do with that information. But men are always going to lead with the intention to take advantage of any loopholes they come across and if that man is not taking advantage of the loophole it's either because he's your friend and he's been in your life long enough to respect you or because that's just not how he is and he doesn't he doesn't have attraction to you enough to want to play a fast game on you and that's fine I'm not saying every single man is out there to get you but I, I'm saying most men are out there to get access to your pussy and if you're gullible, you're in danger. If you're quick to believe what a man tells you because you find it hard to believe it when you tell it to yourself, you are the prime prey. You are in victim territory. Because once you believe that you're beautiful, once you believe that you're funny, once you believe that you're smart, once you believe that your booty is cute, once you believe that you do in fact have great pussy, if a man tells you, he's just echoing sentiments that already resonate within you. So what he's saying doesn't hold any power unless he's putting some pounds behind it. And even then, that's not power that is enough to control you or change the way that you view yourself and how you're going to carry yourself in his presence. It's just going to back up his findings. That's it. Because too many women have lost themselves to being gullible and it's costly it's expensive to be gullible in a bid to believe something about yourself that you struggle to see as true you give your power away men can sniff you out even if you are stunningly beautiful and you look unattainable once they notice a crack they're going to follow the source of that crack because they know there's more where that came from so you have time to rebuild and patch up those cracks. You have got time to repair your mental, emotional and spiritual infrastructure. What you don't have time for is to fix men. What you do not have time for is to convince men that you are lovable and worthy of being picked. What you absolutely sure as hell do not have time for is sleeping with men in hopes that that's going to make you stand out to them. It does the opposite. The easier it is, the less they respect you. And it's not because of you needing to carry shame towards sex no it's not about that this is just about how men view the access that we give them in a particular time frame because you can have the same sex you have with a guy a same guy but if you do so maybe months later or years later there is a difference in how he views you compared to if you did it within a week of knowing him or the same day you met him. And this is not judgment because people have sex for different reasons, especially if you're getting paid. Get out money, girl. OK. Per. But what I'm talking about is the women who try to use sex as a way to build connections with men who they are desperate to experience receiving validation and affection from. If you really want that man to be invested and curious and 
pulled in by you, you've got to not have sex with him. And even if you're having sex with him, you need to have sex with him not that often. And you need to create reasons for him to deserve the sex. There's a strategy to all of this. And it's not that hard. It's not like you have to just sit there like, oh, telekinesis, lifting objects of your mind and telepathically communicating with his dick. It doesn't take any of that. It just comes down to just pause everything and start again. Like you need to learn your worth. Because once you know your worth, you won't be scared to ask for what you deserve. You would just say it like you're describing the color of the sky. Those who resonate will resonate. Those who don't will not. And that's what a filtration process is designed for. Everybody can't come inside you, quite literally. So you need to have standards in place that will eliminate the men who cannot afford to spend time inside you because it's costly. And it should be costly because this shit is fucking amazing. And even if you're not sleeping with him, you still deserve to be treated well and taken care of if that's what you desire. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I hope that you've enjoyed this thought stream. And I really do deeply pray that the spirit of gullibleness exits your body. If we need to do an exorcism, I'm happy to pull up with my holy water and we can bind the spirit of gullibleness in Jesus name. Amen. And I can hold a crucifix to that demon of gullibleness and agreeableness and believing everything men say. I bind you. Spirit, I bind you. <laughs> but if you don't need an exorcism and you resonated with what I said, then great. We're on the same page and I know that I'm not crazy. And even if you didn't agree with me, I still know I'm not crazy because these are producing results in my life and I know that I'm right because I'm not having these struggles I'm not out here losing my mind to men who are trying to kick the back door in to get into it so on that note thank you I will see you soon take care and don't believe everything that you hear from men <laughs>